So here's the starting lineup for the main final of the 2016 Efron 1 8 IC Track European Championships. The world champion in this class, Simon Kurzbuk, rolls off first and would appear to be impervious in this class. He's looked very, very strong. Robin DeHaunt, the surprise Super Bowl winner and a man who's been growing in confidence this entire weekend. Could he spring a surprise and claim his first major trophy? Bruno Coelho, the reigning European 110th IC track European champion from Turkey last year. Could he have the 18th trophy to his list? We now have Gruber, Balestri, Kalari, Peach, Lino, Yalassi and Raiola joining them on the starting grid. This is a grid full of quality and we're about to get it underway. We've now got 45 minutes to decide a European champion. Are we ready? And away they go. It's a really nice start from Simon Kurzberg. He does everything he needs to do. They stay pretty line of stern, but a good pass up the inside from Gruber. Early on on Coelho, he gets the pass straight back on him. Kurzberg, though, we're looking to try and drop to Hunt quickly and set those searingly fast times that we've seen so far in the previous sessions, particularly in qualifying, but De Haunt is threatening already. De Haunt will not let Kurzberg get away. The world champion is threatening to make a lightning start. De Haunt is right there with him. We're not going to have a defending champion. The defending champion of this event was out. De Haunt got a little bit loose there through the previous corners. If we drop back just one car, there's Kurzberg, the second car in line. We watched De Haunt fend off the charges of those behind him. Coelho is putting a huge amount of pressure on, but Coelho has got a pain train of cars behind him as well. Tony Gruber is threatening. Dario Balestri is menacing. And Lumberto Colari is also in there as well. In fact, right the way through to car 10 in ninth spot, which is Carmen Riola. They're all nose to tail pretty much. Timu Lainu had a bit of a bad start and he's fallen a little bit off the pace. But Coelho is starting to put pressure on De Haunt. And De Haunt is struggling to live with Kurzbuk, who's already putting in qualifying level lap speeds. He's looked absolutely composed the entire weekend. Ice cold, calm and collected. And he's deploying it now. He's starting to move away almost immediately. But there's a long way to go in this race. Remember, pit strategy still to come into play. Conditions to come into play. Mistakes can happen. Flame outs and mechanical issues. We've seen that already. Just ask Kurzbuk's uh, countryman Silvio Hackler about that. Through the Efra hairpin and down the back straight. De Haunt resisting the early advances of Bruno Coelho. Coelho is right there, the flamboyant Portuguese driver. His style suited the one tenth down to the ground. His aggression worked perfectly. And in fact, the man, one of the men he beat for that trophy last September in Izmir was, in fact, Simon Kurzbuk. Will roles be reversed today, or can Coelho produce something special? The, qu the point is, though, Kurzbuk is already laying down laps in the 26.5 second bracket. Those behind him are three tenths of a second a lap off. These guys are going to have to find something special. This is the battle we're focusing on for now. Simon Kurzberg starting to move away a little bit out in front. But De Haunt is not that far behind still. De Haunt is, well, actually De Haunt is now 2.8 seconds down. And we're barely three minutes into this thing. Kurzberg got the start he needed. He didn't need any disruption. He didn't get any interference. He made a great, great start. De Haunt, though, is still there. De Haunt. He's starting to get into his own groove now, down into the 26.6s. That's matching the leader's pace now. Kurzbuck's dropped it off a little bit. Maybe he's doing a little bit of a gap management there. Coelho is being kept at arm's length. The uh, battle's a little bit further down the field, a fast and frenetic. But De Haunt through the Efra hairpin once more. He's starting to drop Coelho just a slight amount. And it will be in about a minute or so's time that we'll start to see pit stops for the first time. Will guys try to go long and minimise their pit stops? We saw Peace try and do that in the semi-final. Or will they lose too much time in the process having to run a slower engine mix to save that fuel? That will remain the question. We're expecting pit stops from between four to six minutes each time. But the point that needs to be made right now is that Kurzbuk is already up three seconds over second place. Over second place. Dahan who's had a half spin. That's allowed Coelho back into play. De Haunt with the first mistake. Bleak first. Coelho tried to slide it up the inside. Trying to do the slide job. That's a classic Coelho move. Flamboyant and aggressive. But De Haunt holds his nerve. And gets back into a good groove. And in fact, Coelho is now, if anything, under more pressure from Tony Gruber just behind. So, Jean, if we could drop one car back. And watch Coelho, who's just run wide there. And that's allowed Gruber straight into play. We timed that well. Gruber is right on the back of Coelho now. Looking for the final podium spot. 
but Gruber has to break off that attack. He makes his first pit stop right at four and a half minutes. First pit stop's underway. You can see there from our pit camera there, first few stops are in the books. I think Timu Lainu just made a stop as well from the back of the field. Kurzberg is on the march, but Dehaunt still second, Coelho still third, and Balestri has now moved into fourth with that first stop. Coelho makes his first stop of the race. Onto pit lane he goes. Balestri also in there as well. They're pitting side by side. Quick pit stop as well for Dehaunt. Dehaunt is back out there. That's a great pit stop for Dehaunt. I think Carmen Riola is either a lap down or has tried to go a little bit longer on his first stint. So Dehaunt making his way down the back straight. The erstwhile second place runner. I think uh, Lumberto Colari in car six has tried to stay out as well. So I think Colari and Carmen Riola have stayed out. Yes, Colari and Riola have stayed out a little bit later. So Dehaunt will come through now and resume in second place after that first round of pit stops. In the blink of an eye, they're all through. But what's interesting here is that I feel like Coelho has been snagged somewhere because he's fallen down several positions. Uh, a car has flamed out in the middle here, right in front of us in the TKR turns. Uh, it was number six, which was Lumberto Colari, who made his way up the order. No more now. Dehaunt now is coming under pressure from Tony Gruber. Dehaunt three in second, Gruber third. Coelho had a, a miscue on the first pit stop, which has dropped him quite some way down. Coelho now scored eighth. Dehaunt just ahead of Gruber. Kurzbuck is the dominant leader at the moment. I think car six has had another issue. We'll be coming around to see him in a minute. There he is. Uh, Lomberto Colari. His race is rapidly descending down the drain, I'm afraid. But Dehaunt is still in a solid holding pattern. He's not got the pace or the ground speed to keep up with Kurzbuck. To be honest, I don't think anyone here does. kurzbuck has been on another level since they unloaded uh, on Wednesday. For Dehaunt, it's all about getting what he can get. We never know. Last year in this race, Bolestri was the leader until around half distance when he had a flame out. His car tumbled down the order and it was Oliver Mack who picked up the pieces and grabbed his first European Championship. Will Dehaunt pull a similar stunt here? He's got to rely on something going wrong on Kurzbuck's car, which hasn't looked like happening the whole time we've been out here. Dehaunt ran the Efra hairpin once more. He's put a nice gap now on Tony Gruber. As they come through this S section again. And they've already completed 14 laps. As they come through, Dehaunt is on the move. And they'll be coming up on a second round of stops in a few minutes' time. Round every five minutes or so. It'll take about 30 seconds either way. And Dehaunt is working well. I'll tell you what, Jean. Let's see if we can find our leader, Simon Kurz, because coming over the scoring loop now in the white, orange and yellow car, just beneath us through turn one and through the TKR turns. Here's our leader, Simon Kurz. Look. Let's have a look at him for the moment, because he is out already to a strong lead, although I think Dehaunt has just pulled that gap back a little bit to 2.6 seconds. That's not the gap that it once was, but I wonder if Kurz now has something in reserve. Oh, he hops over the rumble strip. That was a little bit aggressive there. But you do wonder if Kurz has something in reserve. That's at least someone who I can see moving through the field. Yeah, Lomberto Colari uh, is down ninth, and Coelho is down 10th now. He's scored last of all the drivers. Coelho must have had some major issues. He's still running. Co uh, Coelho is down uh, far end of the circuit, but Coelho is still out there, but he has tumbled. He's two laps off Kurzbuck now. He must have had some sort of drama on his pit stop. To be honest, he lost a lot of positions on his first pit stop. Maybe something didn't go right on it. But everything is going right so far for Kurzbuck. Although, I keep sa I, I say that, Dehaunt is actually closing the gap ever so slightly. Dehaunt has got the gap now to 2.4 seconds. Dehaunt running 26.5 second laps. Kurzbuck up into 26 sevens. So Dehaunt is actually closing back in. And Dehaunt has certainly left behind the third place car of Tony Gruber, who I think has just pitted, which will promote Balestri up into third for the time being. One man on the move as well is Timu Lino, who's now up to fourth. Uh, check that fifth spot and has climbed up well from his uh, initial starting position of eight. But as we watch Kurzbuck here, let's watch that gap rather closely and it'll be interesting to see what happens on the next round of pit stops when they happen. Kurzbuck has stabilised the gap at 2.4 seconds and he comes into the pits. So this will be a crucial stop for Kurzbuck. Dehaunt's in as well. 
Now, this will be absolutely important. DeHaan's in. Kurzberg's already back out. A really, really good stop. Oh, super smooth. That's exactly what his team needed. That's exactly what he needed. His crew delivered down there. He got himself out there with a little bit of breathing room. Back under his belt. DeHaan is still not that far away, though. It has to be said. DeHaan is running a good race so far. And we'll see what the gap is coming across the line this time. Kurzberg across the line then. And then DeHaan through. And the gap has gone out. But it's still there. It's still exactly the same. 2.4 seconds. It has not changed at all. So that lead battle is still there. DeHaan's not letting Kurzberg get away. And that's exactly what you have to do. Just keep him in your sights. Even if you don't have the ground speed. Just keep him right there in your sights. It's possible Kurzberg's got something in reserve. But for now, Kurzberg is... We thought laying down a clinic, and one that would be impossible to keep up with, he's eat the gap out a little bit now, another tenth or so. But as Kurzberg heads down the back straight once more, Dehont, I think he's starting to fade a little bit again. They are running so fast right now. It is qualifying speeds, really, at this point in time. So as Kurzberg comes to the TKR turns once more, Dehont across the scoring line. It's now out to 2.8 seconds. Kurzbuck's dropping it. He is dropping the hammer now. 26.388 on that pass lap. As if to say, Robin, what have you got? And at the moment, Dehont is close to his Super Bowl speed, but not quite there. But Kurzbuck really dealing with the pressure fairly effortlessly, you have to say. What's the gap as they come around this time? 2.6. It's fluctuating, you know. It's not going out hugely, it's not going anywhere near over three seconds yet, but it's not closing up a massive amount either. It's really interesting to pay attention to this so far. There is quite an interesting battle for third I want to have a look at at some point as well for uh, Tony Gruber, but let's keep following Kurzbuck. At the moment, Gruber just fending off the attention of Balestri. But DeHaan is running a good race. He's running a sound race. 2.6 the gap again. It's level. I tell you what, Jean, as we stop at the air for a hairpin, just wait on the back straight. We'll let the cars come through. That'll be DeHaan coming through, and then Coelho, then this orange car coming through next. Those two cars going down the back straight now are your third place battle. That's Gruber and Balestri, the two cars on your screen. A lot of orange in one shot. Uh, Tony Gruber, your third place runner, and he's fending off the attention of Dario Balestri, who's been less than a second behind. In fact, he's 0.9 seconds behind for most of the last stint or so since their respective pit stops. So the battle for the last podium spot is to be hotly contested here between the German Gruber and the Italian former champion Balestri. Balestri talked to us before about the importance of left side tyres, the importance of wear rates and the importance of tyre strategy in this one. That car ahead of them, well Gruber's now in the lane, so Gruber is in the lane, Balestri's doing an extra lap. So Gruber, an important stop needed here, he's down and away. He's down and away and we'll watch for a little bit, Timu Lainu is just ducked into the lane as well. So the latest round of pit stops beginning. I'm also going to keep an eye on uh, when Simon Kurzbuck comes in. If he does, Kurzbuck not in this time. So let's follow Gruber. Let's see to follow Gruber. Does Balestri pit this time? I think Balestri is making his fuel last a little bit longer. He is. So Balestri's still out there. Gruber's in a net uh, third, or should be in a net third place given the pit stops with Balestri's crew have been nailing it, and that battle for third has been heating up as a result. Gruber, I think, has had the faster car, but Balestri's had the faster crew, and that's been decisive. So as we watch Gruber, I'm going to keep an eye on, out of the corner of my eye on Kurzbuck and DeHaan, what they're doing. At the moment, we've got a, a distant, tense battle for the lead, where there's just a bit of a gap, but it's not really much at all. Balestri continues on for another lap, and this battle for third is one that could really escalate at any moment. Balestri, I think, once he makes his stop, will be right there or thereabouts with Gruber, unless Gruber's been putting down some more seriously quick outlaps here since his stop. A rundown for you at around 15 minutes in. Kurzbuck leads DeHaan by now 3.1 seconds. That gap's leaked out a little bit. Balestri is third with a pit stop to make. Ahead of this man, Tony Gruber. And I think Balestri has made his stop. Has he... I can't see him out there. And I think Balestri has made the stop. Balestri has, yes. And I think it was a slow stop for Balestri. Because he actually has lost quite a bit of time to Gruber there. 
So I wonder if that was just a slow stop or if he was actually putting on a new set of tyres. Surely not this early in the race, you'd think. Just 15, laps in, uh, 15 minutes in. But it does have the net result of putting Gruber back up into third spot. 6.3 seconds up the road. And that is actually quite a size boost. Now 3.1 seconds on Balestri. The gap before the pit stops was less than a second. Daniele Alassi is fifth. Timu Lainu has worked up to sixth. Carmen Riola is seventh. Uh, Robert Peach down eighth. And Kulari and Coelho are uh, off the lead lap after their, after their problems in the pits earlier. So I think we need to go and find our leader. He's going through the Efra hairpin right now. He's the white and orange and yellow car down the back straight. There's Simon Kurzbrook. Back to our leader who's just slowly edging the gap out. Him and DeHaunt are in a time trial masterclass at this point in time. That's what it is, basically. It's time attack. And at the moment, Kurzbrook is just edging ahead ever so slightly. He just chips away at that lead. Lap after lap, three-tenths that lap. It's now up to 3.6 seconds. DeHaunt is desperately trying to stay with him. It's proving harder and harder to do. Gruber is now seven seconds behind Kurzbrook now. Balestri, 9.4. So Kurzbrook is laying a beat down on this field as we expected but DeHaunt is trying to stay with him and it's quite a surprise that it's Robin DeHaunt I mean coming into this weekend you wouldn't have necessarily expected it to be Robin DeHaunt who had been the man providing the biggest challenge for Simon Kersbrook but he's been in really good form this weekend he dealt with the pressure of Superpole magnificently to take that out in a, a duel that was separated with all four cars separated only by three hundredths of a second he dealt really well with that to take a super tense super pole win and get himself into the final and so far he's backed that up all the way he's looked really really good it was down 3.4 it's now up to 3.7 again for Kurzweil who's now got a little bit of traffic to deal with I think that might be Lumberto Colari's car that he might have to pass going down the back that's uh, Carmen Riola actually that will be the next guy in shot that uh, Kurzweil has to navigate past but so far it's been absolute plain sailing for the world champion who looks on to add a European Championship crown to go alongside his World Championship title. And it will be richly deserved if he keeps up this performance. The Hunt now at 3.6 seconds. It really is... The gap is not moving to any dramatic amount. It is literally tenths of seconds, sometimes hundreds of seconds in terms of lap time difference. They're both lapping in the 26 threes, fours, fives and sixes, qualifying speeds, effectively which is incredible across an entire race pace. Now, Carmen Riola behaves himself well, gets out of the way. DeHaunt has got the gap down to 3.3 again. It just feels to me like each one are taking swings at each other, but Kurzbrook seems to get the bigger swings in terms of uh, tenths gained on DeHaunt. Bolestri is now third, 9.7 seconds back. I assume Gruber has made a stop. I believe he has. Peach is now up to sixth. Lino down seventh. As another cycle of pit stops gets underway, we'll watch for when Kurzbrook makes his stop. And in comparison to Robin DeHaunt. Robin DeHaunt, who's now got the gap down to 3.3. It could not be closer. Down the back straight once more. The thing is, at this point, what makes this so tense is although Kurzbrook is laying down a masterclass and looks impervious, if he makes one even small mistake, DeHaunt is going to be right on him. So this is what makes it so tense. As Coelho's car slows, he's had a pretty disastrous final. Oh, I wonder if he uh, was coming out the pits and actually let that lap traffic through because he now appears to be up to speed. But Kurzbrook now up to four seconds the lead over to Hunt. Just gradually, gradually extending that margin out to a point where it will be unbeatable. He hasn't looked like making a single mistake all week. That's the thing with Kurzbrook, but he's in the pits now. This is where a mistake could happen. His crew have been pretty effortless, fueling in. Doesn't look like any tyres going on. Back out. There's DeHaunt's car. There's context for you. Kurzbrook's back out as DeHaunt comes in. The gap was 4.3 coming into the pits. We'll see what it is now after they come round on their outlaps. Pitting at the same time. So matching strategies. Where's Kurzbrook now? And I think he's gained even more time. I think his pit crew are doing a magnificent job down there. This is a guy at the top of his game, at the top of his form, with a crew to match. Across the scoring loop, where's DeHaunt at in relation? I think the gap's gone out, if anything, even further. 4.4 seconds, so DeHaunt again stabilises the gap, but it's just those tenths of seconds that he's chipping away. They're just not able to gain any further on that. So it's Kurzbrook leading DeHaunt by 4.4 seconds. Tony Gruber is about 
2.6 seconds further back. In third, fourth is Dario Balestri. Daniele Alassi is, uh, is fifth. And then sixth is Timu Lino. Seventh is Carmen Riola. Eighth is Robert Peach. And then ninth is Lumberto Colari and tenth is Bruno Coelho. Both those guys lapsed down at the moment. In fact, Yalassi, Lino, Riola and Peach are actually a lap down to our leader Kurzbrook. That says a lot. Uh, well, Yalassi and Lino, Riola, they are coming across the line now. They are almost a lap down. They're a long way back on Kurzbrook. But that gap again just being chipped away. DeHaan's doing enough to just desperately try and stay in touch. But every so often, one absolute steaming lap from Kurzbrook will come in and will eat the gap out ever further. And it just seems like DeHaan can't get enough to come back at him. It's a really, really tense struggle. As I say, if Kurzbrook trips up once, then DeHaan's going to be all over him. It'll take one flip, one flame out, something like that. And Kurzbrook will have DeHaan all over him. It leads to a arena pace zone of their own right now. And in fact, DeHaan's pulled it back to 3.8. So DeHaan takes a big swing now. He's desperately trying to stay in touch. And he is just about doing so. So this has been a really good run so far from DeHaan. But does he have enough to consistently close in on Kurzbrook? I think Kurzbrook's consistency and the ability to pull out those qualifying level laps at key moments are really where he's winning this race. Back up to four seconds again. As soon as DeHaan makes any gains on Kurzbrook, Kurzbrook takes them right back with some change. Down the back straight once more for Kurzbrook. Four seconds back is DeHaan. 3.3 behind DeHaan is Tony Gruber. A few seconds further back from him is Dario Balestri. Daniele Alassi, Robert Peach, Timu Lino and Carmen Riola are your lead lap cars. And Bruno Coelho is in the lane again. He's done many, many laps now. So his European Championship final really didn't get underway much past the... Uh, the first pit stop. And in fact, I think it is now game over for Coelho, which is a real shame. This isn't, I think, his preferred discipline, but he is still very, very strong in a one-eighth car. And it would have been fantastic to see him claim a one-eighth title to go with his one-tenth title last year that he won so brilliantly uh, in Turkey. Round the Efra hairpin goes Kurzbrook again. It's 4.1 seconds. The gap is so close. You can't almost, almost can't afford to take a, your eyes off it. Bolestri has moved up to third. Now here's something, what's happened to Gruber, I wonder? Gruber is still out there, but I think Gruber has made his pit stop, but it's put him behind quite a big group of cars. So, depending on what the scoring monitors tell us, I might have, see, we can have a look at the battle for third. It might have hotted up again. Bulestri is in the pits now. And let's see where Bulestri comes out at. Now, I think he may have lost, I think uh, Yelassi's just gone through a few guys who have not pitted yet. Where's Bulestri coming out at? In fact, Balestri hasn't rejoined yet. And that'll put him right back in with uh, Gruber, I think. Gruber and Balestri are out nose to tail. So, uh, any minute now, Jean, if you can stay at the Efra hairpin just now, we'll let Kurzbrook go through. And then the orange car coming through now, the second of those two orange cars, is Tony Gruber, who has resumed just in front of Dario Balestri. I think that is the battle for third. Kurzbrook is in the pits. And in fact, I think Dehont... Uh, has something happened to Dehaan here? No, those two are actually uh, a lap ahead. I think they've now pitted in. So Kurzbrook and Dehaan are pitting beneath us once again, matching strategies. But uh, it is now Kurzbrook back out. Kurzbrook gets back out again, and Dehaan. Uh, Dehaan is uh, seems to be waiting quite a while for him to rejoin. He's now back out. I think he's lost time in the pits. We're following Gruber, who is now down in sixth place. Now, I wonder if both Gruber and Blestri took tyres on that last stop, because they've dropped a long way back. They have faded rather, quite a long way, actually. So the third place runner right now is actually Daniele Yelassi in car nine. And everyone will make their tyre stop at some point, of course. But maybe Balestri and Gruber have made their change now. Gruber has once again gapped out to Balestri. He appears to have superior uh, ground speed. So it is still Kurzbrook. Now 6.3 seconds out over Robin DeHaan. Third place is now Carmen Riola in car 10. Fourth place is uh, Gruber now. So Gruber is moving back up. These pit stops happening now. Tire stops are occurring. 
I wonder if that's where DeHaunt lost a little bit of his time making that tyre stop. So Gruber comes underneath us. Carmen Riola is not far ahead. A big gust of wind blowing across the track. And Gruber is not a huge amount behind Carmen Riola right now. He's about two seconds back. So this is the fourth place car you're watching. You will not miss a single thing here on RCTV's live coverage of the EFRA 18th IC Track European Championships final. Carmen Riola still holds third for now, but Gruber is closing, or at least I thought he was. Gruber is not closing at the moment. It's a 1.4 second gap. And if anything, Riola is actually lapping a little bit quicker. So Riola, I don't think, has made a tyre stop yet. That'll be why he's jumped up the ranking so dramatically from where he was not long ago. Yelassi and Timu Lainu are now down 8th and 7th, respectively. Now here comes uh, Gruber into the lane. Gruber's in the lane. Fuel only. Bolestri goes back through. And Riola with... Uh, Riola has continued on still. So Carmen Riola, I think, might be trying to tactically play himself into this battle for third. Bolestri, as we've seen before, has already... has gone on longer, generally, on his stints than Gruber. And we've got a VRC Pro replay of that pit stop. And... Oh, there's a little bit of a problem on the exit for... Ooh, Tony Gruber, ouch. I saw James Grimace there as he left the pit lane. And Gruber, he just got set down at an awkward angle and the, the rear wheel span, spun him straight into the wall there. Doesn't appear to have affected the balance of the car in any way. I'm just having a look here. I think... I think Carmen Riola may have just pitted. So, Balestri, I think has not pitted yet. Yes, Balestri has now scored third. And Gruber should be scored fourth. Bearing in mind, Gruber has made a stop on this cycle. We think Balestri has not. So Gruber is your fourth place car right now. Potentially coming up to third once Balestri makes his latest stop. Through the HBI hairpin. And Kurzbeck, meanwhile, has leaked that gap out now between himself and DeHaunt to 8.2 seconds. It's a masterclass out there, really, from the world champ. And Balestri is having a good run as well. He's up in third, the former champion of this event. Balestri on the podium. Balestri talked a lot to us earlier about pit strategy, about when to take tyres and when not to. And at the moment, it appears he's judged it pretty much spot on. Balestri now in the lane. Balestri now in the pits. We will see now if Gruber takes the advantage back. Uh, Balestri, I think Gruber will take the advantage back. Yes, he does. Balestri rejoins. Oh, and chops the nose off for car seven, which is rather peace to keep his fourth spot. No quarter asked or given from the two former champions as they get their own duel underway. Gruber comes around once more. I can see Kurzbeck on the other side of the circuit. De Haunt is actually appears to have closed up a little bit. Maybe that's my eyes deceiving me. Maybe the pit stops are in a certain cycle at the moment. But uh, I think we might have to go back to our leader in a minute, Jan. He's coming across the start-finish line now. He's right beneath us. Through the TKR turns. He's the white, orange and yellow car. There's our leader, Simon Kurzbeck. And just as I say that, I got the gap down to 1.6 seconds. But I think that was because Dehaunt was off cycle with his pit stop. Because Dehaunt is in fact still in the lane. No, Dehaunt is back out now. Dehaunt is back out. So that was why the gap had closed up in such a way. I figured that would probably be the case, but I thought we may as well pay attention to it in case a dramatic change of position occurred. So Simon Kurzbeck continues laying the beat down on this field. He's now about to put a lap on car seven, Robert Peach, a former champion of this event, and no slouch at all. But mere mincemeat for Kurzbeck in such dominant fashion. Yeah, the lead gap now is back to where it was, 8.5 seconds or so between Kurzbeck and DeHaunt. DeHaunt can still be very proud of this performance, don't get me wrong. It has been a really, really good drive from the youngster. And as I say, I saw him at this event last year. He was steady, he was consistent, he was pretty smooth. But he did not have that outright race pace that would threaten the top end of town. The fact now that he is almost on a par with the world champion and comfortably ahead of such guys as Peach, Bonestri, Lino, Yelassi and more really says a lot about his development as a driver, how he's come through and he's really extended his uh, knowledge and his base level of driving. But Kurzbeck, meanwhile, he's been on another level since the flag dropped, really. 
And the fact that Hunt stuck with him for so long and provided such valiant resistance is the biggest props you can give to DeHaunt. Now the gap's now up to 9.2 seconds. So Gruber has now meanwhile made a stop beneath us. I think pending on what they do there, I think the battle between Gruber and Bolestri has a chance of going all the way. Bolestri obviously on a slightly different pit cycle, but Kurzbuck continues on his mesmeric way. DeHaunt struggling now to stay with him. The gap is now, I wouldn't be surprised if the gap's now, it's nearly 10 seconds, it's 9.6 seconds now, DeHaunt. Uh, behind Kurzbuck. How on earth Kurzbuck could do this a lap after that? I haven't seen him put a single foot wrong. I have not seen him make a single mistake. Not a single head of a rumble strip, sliding the car out in the corner, banging a wall, flipping over. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Kurzbuck has been the picture of perfection out here so far. And with 15 minutes to go, he's got this one made. He's got every chance now of bringing home a European title uh, of bringing home the European title alongside his world championship as we watch Kurzbuck continue on his way lap after lap of perfection this is very hard to achieve De Haunt is now nearly 10 seconds back in second Bolestri is third and still ahead of Gruber I think by dint of the pit strategies but I do wonder if that uh, strategy is going to pay off Bolestri seems to be going a lot further every time Bolestri now 16 seconds down on Kurzbuck and where's Gruber in relation? Gruber's quite a way back. So I'm just going to keep an eye on... Uh, we keep watching Kurzbuck as he pounds around this track, putting on a masterclass of uh, precision RC driving. And DeHaunt now down over 10 seconds. 10.7 seconds. DeHaunt is just not able to live with that pace, but, uh, but no one else is, quite frankly. Uh, Bolestri, 16.5 seconds. Back in third. I'm just keeping an eye on Balestri and Gruber because I think Balestri has a pit stop to make and Balestri is currently making it. So Gruber goes around back into third, I think. Uh, yeah, Balestri is still out there. I'm keeping an eye on those as we watch Kurzbuck just because I'm curious to see. Balestri is now in for his stop. We may have a bit of a battle for third on our hands here because Gruber is quite some distance back. So I'm going to keep my eyes on Balestri, who's back out again. And Balestri appears to now be in third spot for good now. Kurzbuck in for one of his last stops of the race. It'll be this and probably two more. Kurzbuck is out. And Dehaunt is in now. He's trying to match the pit stops. I think Kurzbuck has been helped by a brilliant performance from his crew, you have to say. That's another area where they've been faultless. He's been faultless on the track and his crew have responded with perfect pit stops that have consistently been almost a second quicker, you think, than DeHaunt around that pit stop cycle. So we continue to follow Kurzbuck. DeHaunt second on the 10.1 seconds back. Bolestri is third now. It seems to be in third for good now ahead of uh, Gruber. That pit strategy appears to have eventually paid off. Well, DeHaunt now down to 8.5 seconds back on Kurzbuck, though. He has made a little bit of that time back. But again, as we said earlier, just chipping away, really. And Balestri is now in third comfortably. Fourth place is Gruber. Now 23 seconds down on the lead and in nine sec seconds back from Balestri. Uh, Peach is fifth. And I don't think that far back from Gruber, in fact. DeHaunt now back up to 9.1 seconds. Just as you think that gap is coming down a little bit, it, it doesn't. It leaks back out again. That's been the story of the race. And it must have been frustrating for DeHaunt to be that close and yet, in the same breath, that far. But uh, it's been that sort of race for him. Peach is now showing us a lap down. I think Kurzbuck has actually lapped everyone up to four, uh, fifth place. Which is another measure of his lap speed. DeHaunt trying to hold the gap at 9.1 seconds. I think for pride more than anything else. But he will still get a place on the podium. And that is a huge achievement for DeHaunt. And the Haunt's laps, as I say, have still been really, really good. It's just that Kurzbuck has that extra, absolutely right on the ragged edge lap to deploy whenever he wants to, kind of at his will. But the Haunt has closed the gap again. I wonder if Kurzbuck is just managing that gap now. He doesn't mind the fact that it's coming down a little bit. Maybe he doesn't know. 8.5 seconds now. It's still a big gap around a track, even around a, a long track like this. 8.5 seconds is huge. It's basically the, the length of a pit stop. 
if you think about it. So Kersbrook leads over to Hunt. We are watching Kersbrook continue on his masterclass around here. He gets the 10th back on to Hunt that lap. Bolestri remains a solid third. And he's largely untroubled by the look of uh, it from Gruber. Kersbrook is through. I think Bolestri has just made a stop. Will this bring Gruber back into contention? I don't think so. He's still a, a, a fair distance back. So Kersbrook through. In fact, I think Gruber will go through. But the alternating strategies are an interesting one. Dehont still under nine seconds on the gap. He's still keeping it there. As I say, Dehont's De laps are some of the fastest he's turned all weekend. It's just the same with Kersbrook. Kersbrook has been on another level all weekend. So Kersbrook is on 75 laps and just over 10 minutes to go. Now 76 laps and just over 10 minutes to go. Dehont in second. Gruber's now moved back to third. So I wonder if Bulestri gained some time on him by making... Uh, or Gruber made a tyre stop earlier. And now Gruber has made that time back. Uh, Robin de Haunt has still been has been driving a really good race it has to be said but we've been uh, watching Kersbrook lay a masterclass now for quite a while so let's if we can stay in the next corner Jean and drop back one car because the next car through your frame will be our current third place car Tony Gruber round he goes in the all orange machine with the white and blue on the side and Daniele Lassi now showing fourth Gruber, I'm pretty sure there are actually sparks coming off the cars at certain parts around the track. As they bottom out, as they hit the hit the bottom of their cars. Gruber coming round. Now I'm interested to see where this works out because uh, actually I think Balestri has had some sort of bad issue here because he has now scored four laps down on the leaders. So a disaster for Balestri, who was having a fine run and was challenging for third. But I think something has gone drastically wrong on that car. So Gruber is now your third place runner. And he looks like he's going to be taking this third place out. Daniele Alassi is not a, not a million miles away in fourth, but has a lot of work to do to get there. DeHaunt still keeping that gap at 8.4 seconds for the lead. Uh, Gruber is actually being scored a lap behind both of those guys. So Kersbrook and DeHaunt appropriately are on a lap on their own. Gruber third, Alassi fourth, Carmen Riola fifth and Robert Peach scored fifth at the moment Lumberto Calari seventh and Dario Balestri now five laps behind the leaders uh, in eighth place no way for that race to finish Timu Lainu looks like he's also had some issues as well he's dropped back and he's out of the race Bruno Coelho we know about was the early casualty so Gruber looks like he's got third place on the lock he's got about five seconds in hand on Daniele Elassi for that third spot some more shouting from the pit lane. Hard to tell if there's real problems or that's just how they're communicating with each other. Gruber in the lane then. Gruber's in. So where does that leave Yalassi? Answer, I don't think anywhere near. Gruber returns on his way. Yeah, Yalassi's quite a distance back. I think Yalassi must have pitted around the same time. So Gruber looks to be fairly unchallenged in terms of his position. So Gruber continues on his way and just worth pointing out, I'm sure this is Kersbrook managing the gap, but Robin de Hon has got that gap back down to 6.9 seconds, so he's chipped away a little bit at that lead. And in fact, Jean, if we drop one car back from Gruber, the car we're following, the next car coming through will be Robin de Hon. You will watch this car. He's now pulled out 6.6 .6 seconds on Simon Kersbrook. As I say, I'm pretty sure that's gap management. So... I'm fairly certain that Kersbrook has pace in hand if he wants it. Uh, judging by the lap speeds, almost certainly. But uh, I wonder if DeHaunt just has something in reserve. It, well, it's gone back up to seven seconds. So I think DeHaunt is really trying. He is fighting so hard to make a fist of this, to make a battle of this up the front. And he really deserves credit for it. He's kept Kersbrook honest the whole way. And he kept him in a position where if Kersbrook has tripped up even once, De Haunt will be there to pick up the pieces and profit. So you have to give De Haunt credit. It doesn't look like Kersbrook is going to make any mistakes. There's still time for a mechanical failure, but again, that hasn't looked likely since Kersbrook's unloaded. And to be honest with you, I think Kersbrook does have something in reserve as he's now chipping the gap back out again. De Haunt goes searing down that back straight once more up 
probably over 70 miles an hour as they go down there. Gruber still holding a safe third. And in fact, Gruber is the next car ahead for De Haunt. So that shows you the pace that these guys have been running at. And De Haunt is actually ahead now. Scored ahead now of Kurzburg. Something happened to Kurzburg car. No, Kurzburg's just pitted. I wonder if he's put tyres on. So De Haunt now scored as the leader. He's trying to go an extra lap on Kurzburg. I wonder if that's tactical. I wonder if there's something here that we're seeing from De Haunt. Maybe a final roll of the dice. Trying to go a little bit longer on fuel, a little bit longer on his pit window. He goes again, he continues on. So we have a late change of lead here. De Haunt is now out in the lead. Gruber is actually now second. Riola's third. And Kurzbuck is now scored down fifth. So I wonder, has Kurzbuck had some sort of lengthy issue there? That doesn't seem like a scheduled stop at all. Kurzbuck's been on the money every single time. Was that a tyre stop? Or did something go drastically wrong for the world champion that's knocked him right down the order? Kurzbuck's actually been scored upwards of two laps down on De Haunt now. That's Team in line whose car is slowing on the back straight as well. Did Kurzbuck flame out there? I'm really not sure. I'm actually looking from on the track. I can see Kurzbuck's car still going round. Did they have to change something there? Has this changed the entire complexation of this race? Has Robin De Haunt's strategy of keeping Kurzbuck honest for the entire race worked out. So we're watching Gruber right now who's running second. One car back from him, Jan, is your leader, Robin De Haunt. De Haunt is now your leader and he's scoring as your leader. And in amongst all that, oh, they're just moving past the car. That's car six of Lumberto Colari who's flamed out and no marshals could hear anything. They were sat both of their backs to it. They didn't know what was going on. Right, let's find our leader though again. He's coming down the, he's coming in the pits now. So in comes De Haunt now. Could this be the game changer? Is there fuel going? It's just fuel. It's just fuel for De Haunt. So he's back out again. Is that Kurzbuck going back through? Passed him to the lead? I'm not sure. We'll have to watch when the scoring updates. And we are following Robin De Haunt because he is now scored as the leader. Ruber's just ahead of him, but Simon Kurzbuck's just ahead of him. Now, is that for position or is Kurzbuck further back? Did he have a bigger issue? Kurzbuck comes across the line this time. No, Kurzbuck still being scored fifth. No, Kurzbuck scored third now. He scored third, so he's actually on the same lap as Gruber just ahead of him. So something drastic has happened here late in the going. And Kurzbuck through past Gruber for second. De Haunt also makes his way by. The difference is, De Haunt's on another lap from these guys. He's a lap ahead. De Haunt has taken the lead here. And he's three minutes away from becoming European champion. The Super Bowl winner, the man who has been on pace. Kurzbuck's back in the lane, actually. He's back in the pits again. So something must have gone drastically wrong for Kurzbuck. I can only assume he's had a spectacularly unscheduled stop. A glow box come out maybe, a flame out, missed a fuel window, who knows? But De Haunt, we talked about this all day. We talked about Robin De Haunt running fast enough to stay with Kurzbuck in case something happened. That's exactly what's happened. De Haunt was almost matching Kurzbuck. Kurzbuck was chipping, chipping, chipping away, extending that lead and now, Something huge has happened to Kurzbuck. He's now scored fourth. He might not even be on the podium after this. This is absolutely extraordinary. But what we are certain of is that De Haunt is your current leader and is two minutes and change away from becoming your 2016 EFRA 1.8 IC track European champion. In what's been a marvellous drive, you have to say, from De Haunt, he's stuck with Kurzbuck for the entire way. Kurzbuck tried to shake him off and was gradually doing so. But De Haunt stayed with him. He never gave up, knowing that if Kurzbuck so much as tripped up once, he'd be able to profit. And that's exactly what's happened. Kurzbuck has made one slip up. He's, in fact, fighting now for second. And in fact, there is actually a battle for second, third, fourth emerging. So he might be able to have a quick look at that before the end of this race. Um, Sean, if you stay in that corner right now, the next three cars coming through, you battle for second. They're a lap behind that car, the orange car of Gruber. Then it's the white car of Yulassi. And then the white, orange and, red, and yellow car of Kurzbuck, your leader for so long in this race. This is your battle for second. This is all happening a full lap behind Robin De Haunt, who must have wondered, who must be thanking his lucky stars right now. It's all come good. He's made his own luck in this one. But this is the battle to the end for the final podium spots. Three into two don't go. Oh, a little bit of contact there on Gruber. 
Yolassi really going for it here in the closing stage. This is bringing Kurzbuck into it. Kurzbuck is also there. Kurzbuck, the fastest man on the weekend, is in danger of not even finishing on the podium here. Gruber is trying to defend from Yolassi. He's going to go deep right into the HPI hairpin. Yolassi is all over the back of Gruber. He has the faster car. Kurzbuck's just waiting to profit on both these guys. This is going to be a battle for the death. And it isn't even for the win. It's for second place. This is how competitive these guys are for a podium finish at this race. Car six, the car you'll see behind them is Lumberto Colari. He's on a different lap. So Gruber, second. Yelassi, third. Kurzbuck, not even on the podium, having led so much of this race. It's extraordinary to think. Yelassi goes very, very wide out of the HPI hairpin. They are working so hard. This is ragged edge, seat of your pants stuff from these drivers. Kurzbuck trying to get through as well. But meantime, while this is all happening, Dehont is on his final lap. Dehont is about to come round and become... European champion. In fact, he's in the banking. Jean, if we can get a look at our leader, he's coming through the HBI hairpin right now, through the S's. This is Robin de Hont's moment. He's put in a brilliant performance and he's about to become Efra 1 8th IC track European champion. And then just behind, coming across the scoring loop now, they're going to be side by side for second. And Tony Gruber takes it at the line. He holds off Daniele Alassi. Robin, let's start with you. Winner of the Super Bowl, you now won the European Championship. Has this has this come as a little bit of a surprise? Just try and sum up your feelings now, because I think for most of that final, you were thinking, you must have been thinking, well, second's going to be pretty good. But then late on, look at what happened. Yeah, I was actually quite uh, securing my second place. Um, until, yeah, sorry for Simon, but when he fell out, um, I didn't believe at first. So I just thought, bring it home. And uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> What was your strategy to keep on pace with uh, Simon throughout the final? Because it looked like you were kind of the only one who would really live with him in terms of one lap speed. Um, I saw Simon pulling away a little bit and I, I didn't, the more I pushed, the further I saw him get away. So this, I, when I started to push, the car started to slide a little bit and uh, I just thought drive smooth and stop pushing and just drive your own race and uh, drive your own clock. So, yeah. It worked out in the end. It works. That's a very good strategy. Now, finally, I know it's, it's literally just happened, so it's probably gonna, not going to have sunk in at all, but try and put into words what this means to you, what this European Championship victory means to you. Yeah, it's unbelievable, but I can't believe it at, uh, at the moment. So, <laughs> But it's really unbelievable, yeah. Really. It's been a remarkable performance from you all weekend. Thank you so much for talking to us here. Congratulations, Robin. You are the new European champion. Thank you. Let's hand over to our second-place finisher, Tony Gruber. Uh, Tony, you had a pretty intense battle for third all the way through that uh, that race, mostly with um, uh, Dario Balestri, um, and suddenly became a second near the end. Just talk to us how the strategies kind of varied between you and your nearest rivals. At first, I, my strategy was drive really cool and relax. So I see Dario in, in the hack, and I push more. So I see in the pits when I when I do a pit stop, I come a few minutes for, for him. And yes, push hard and do uh, no mistakes. But on the uh, out of the pit, I uh, crash my car and go on the on the body, so I lose uh, a second. Yeah, I, I, but I think it was a really good race and really really amazing the second position of the European Championship. And yeah, how tough was it to adjust so quickly to that late battle that emerged between you and Daniele? Because it was that was. Real blood and thunder stuff near the end there. It was a great battle between you two. Just talk us through it a little bit. And this, on, the, on the end, it was really, really close to Daniela. My, my tires were really little. So I push hard and I, I give all what I have. And yes, to the end, it was enough. <laughs> just, I mean, just about enough. It was really, really close. And uh, finally, just sum up your thoughts now. Coming home, second place. You must have thought a third was possible. You've just got second in the European Championship. How does this feel? Absolutely amazing, and I, I hope it, I can I can try it on the next year. So, but in the moment, absolutely amazing, and yes, absolutely. <laughs> words of words are hard to come by at this point. It's very raw after the event. Thank you very much, Tony, for speaking to us. Congratulations on your second place. And now, let's talk to Daniele Ilassi. Now, for most of the race, you were sort of in the midfield, but then late on. You were able to jump up into that podium battle. Just talk us through that intense final few minutes and that great battle between yourself, Tony, and of course, Simon. Yeah, in the, the start for me was very hard because I started with a P9 
uh, with all the other driver in front was very hard to to pass but uh, so I try to make my race most consist consistent and in the end so you know okay I'm sorry for Simon because I, I think I think he win the race but can happen because uh, after also Dario have some problems so when I finish I, I at least in, uh, 10 minutes to the end I, I was in four position I think about to the podium so then uh, I arrive uh, very close to Tony but uh, I, I prefer don't don't make any mistake and destroy my race and also the race of Tony but the problem was Simon too much close to me <laughs> then uh, it was very difficult because I can push more but I I, I also make you got a, stuck between yeah, Tony and Simon very you? very hard yeah, so just talk to us a little bit about that, how your race strategy kind of changed throughout. You started out low down in the field, then of course you worked your way up, then late on you thrust into that battle. Just talk to us how you sort of changed your mentality on the fly for the race. My, uh, for me, the mentality was the same like the start because when I was in the final, I, for me, sincerely, it was uh, my best result from my opinion, for my position in the moment. Then I think I make my best. Uh, after, okay, when I feel... I can take the podium, yeah, the pressure a little bit growing, but no problem. So It sounds like you, you really enjoyed that final battle. It was great to see from all of you. Just sum up your thoughts on taking third at the European Championships this year. I know it's very raw, it's fresh after the event, but try and sum them up as best you can. Yeah, but if you think how old I'm <laughs> and the other, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's super nice, my position now. <laughs> super, super nice. He's enjoying it right here. Old guys rule in these cases, but all of you guys, congratulations. You all drove fantastic races. Well done. Here's your podium for the 2016 F1 18th IC Track European Championships 2016. Congratulations, guys, particularly Robin, your new champion. Thank you very much, guys.